Welcome back, everyone. The kiddos may be enjoying uh, the summer right now out of school, but right now a number of Bay Area school leaders are hard at work getting ready for the upcoming school year, which is just weeks away. Leaders say they plan to get kids fully back into the classroom in the fall. Many districts are now supporting recent guidelines from the state of California and the CDC to return to full-time in-person instruction. Joining us live tonight to discuss the move is L.K. Monroe, the superintendent of Alameda County Schools. Superintendent Monroe, thanks so much for joining us here on Cron 4 News at 8. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Can you look, talk? We know that you have been uh, very strong in supporting this uh, recent guideline from the CDC. Uh, once a, this, 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 new, this new guideline, I should say, really allows uh, counties and local jurisdictions to have really kind of the flexibility to move forward in how they best see fit in doing this. Is that a good reason why you are supporting? Is that a big reason why you're supporting this? Yes, it's it's definitely one of the reasons and one of the key reasons I'm supporting it. Uh, I think if you speak to just about any educational leader as, as well as teachers and classified staff, uh, what they would say is that uh, they realize the importance of, of making sure our kids are back in school. It has been too long with uh, some uneven experiences for our students. So uh, that's the most important uh, reason to, to persevere to do this. Uh, but the guidelines that were released by the CDC and the, the clarification of the further guidelines by California Department uh, of Public Health are really going to help us have the clarity that we need to return to school. Can you talk a little bit about uh, what are some of the steps taking place right now in Alameda County uh, to get ready for that to happen in the fall? Absolutely. Uh, so uh, as, as some may know, um, the governor recently, um, uh, the legislature approved the budget, which had language about how we're going to uh, return as well. So for most districts, there will be uh, an option for those parents who uh, need to have uh, to have a longer runway to return their students to school. As uh, school leaders and districts, we are absolutely committed to having every student back in person, but understand that there will be a few mitigating circumstances. So schools are ramping up to making sure that they have their classrooms uh, in, in order, uh, that their educators who really have uh, done a huge lift this year in doing distance learning are have what they need to be back in the classroom, making sure that students while remaining masked um, are safe and uh, that those settings are prepared for them. So it's what it's what schools usually do, but there are some added measures that schools are needing to uh, make sure they're taking into account. You're you are the president of the California. Uh County Superintendents Association. So you're in charge of, or you lead the effort among uh, all superintendents, county superintendents across California. Talking with your colleagues, what are their concerns uh, as they move forward uh, into the fall? Are they running into some challenges that you yourself feel like could be coming down the way as well? Are you concerned about uh, variants that are now popping up as well? Right. We're definitely watching that. So there are 58 counties in California and 58 county superintendents of education. And uh, in this, during this pandemic, uh, all of us have been convening and meeting with district superintendents to make sure that uh, we're ready and that things are in place uh, through every step of this pandemic. Uh, the variant is a concern. Uh, we are absolutely watching that. And it's, uh, I would say, a large reason for not wanting to eliminate masks prematurely uh, in the classroom as we are still uh, ensuring that as many people uh, as are able are getting vaccinated. So uh, in different areas of the county, there are, I'm sorry, different areas of the state, there are counties who actually have barely closed and there are others that barely opened during the pandemic. So across the state, you're seeing a great range. But right now, there is a consistent uh, effort to make sure schools are open uh, in the fall. And for some, the fall is only three weeks away. Uh, so those efforts are ramping up very quickly. And uh, school leaders are having to uh, adjust and mitigate for things coming at them uh, in, in real time. Um, variants, making sure there's masking. 
and there's uh, going to be further guidance released. Uh, we're being told Monday. So uh, we have, we've heard about uh, the masks, which are different from the CDC guidelines, but there's uh, more guidance coming from the California Department of Health on Monday. We know that a number of children, younger children, uh, we know that kids from 12 to 17 who are attending school uh, are able to get vaccinated. The younger kids so far not able to. Will it become a requirement for students to have the vaccine in order to attend California schools? So one of the things that we've done throughout this pandemic, uh, uh, Alameda County as well as other um, county offices and, and counties in general, uh, there's been an unprecedented partnership between uh, the offices of education throughout the state and the public health offices for each county. So we meet weekly uh, with the superintendents and other educational leaders uh, with our director of public health. And we're um, absolutely discussing those questions and asking right now, there is no uh, indication in the near future that it will be mandated. That's not something that um, we have influence over. Uh, but if you look at uh, historically how uh, uh, other vaccines that are mandated um, uh, came to be uh, mandated, there is a process and we're still in the very early stages of this particular um, uh, vaccine. So we are absolutely encouraging it. We are encouraging it for anyone who is eligible um, to uh, have the vaccine and we are now asking for vaccination status of those who are attending schools, but it's not yet required. So right now not required, but it is something that is being discussed, something that could potentially be implemented down the road. We, I can absolutely see that, uh, that that could be true down the road. Do you know when that could p potentially take effect? Well, right now, the thing that we are most concerned uh, about in terms of uh, timeline is when the youngest children or younger children will actually have access to the vaccine. So that's the push now. I've heard everything from late fall to the spring uh, before that happens. Um, I think once the, you know, every age group is eligible to be vaccinated, um, I, I don't know that that's... Um, uh, I don't know that that's the barrier, but I certainly think that the conversation will ramp up then about whether it's required. It's, it's absolutely something that we are advocating for, but not something that um, is within our, our policy purview as right. schools. A lot of parents will be waiting and watching to see how this all shakes out in the months and uh, years to come. L.K. Monroe, the superintendent of Alameda County Schools, thank you so much for the time and the knowledge here on Cronford News at 8 o'clock.